Awesome. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to be here. I'm excited. I just want to thank Kristen and The Believer for everything that they do for having us. Um, this is such a special event. So what we're going to be doing is uh, making uh, comic postcards to send to people that we miss. Uh, so basically, all you need for comic postcards is just one sheet of copy paper. Um, and then if you have cardstock or thicker paper, basically anything, um, anything a little thicker will do. If you don't have thicker paper, that's totally fine. Instead of making a postcard, you'll just make a regular card and you can throw it in an envelope later. Um, so something I like about making postcards is um, I'm always looking to like increase my readership. And uh, when I just throw a postcard in the mail, I just put a stamp on it. Not only does the person that I send it to get to read it, but I also get to entertain postal employees who I love. Um, so that's like an added benefit of the comic postcard project. Um, all right, so let's get started. The first thing you're gonna do, take your copy paper and you're just gonna fold it in half twice. This is basically how we're gonna get the size and shape of our postcard. So I'll give you one minute for that. Once you've got the size and shape of your postcard, I'm gonna take you to my drawing cam here. Just trace your folded up piece of paper onto the cardstock. And then if you have scissors, you can cut it out. If you don't have scissors, you can always cut it later. Sounds of me cutting. All right, got my postcard shape. If you don't have a postcard, basically you just have a regular card. All right. So we're actually gonna start this project with a writing prompt um, because I want to get you guys prompted to think about what you're going to put on your postcard. So the first thing I want you to do on just a scrap piece of paper, so set the postcard aside. And on a scrap piece of paper, I want you to write the name of somebody that you miss. So this is the person you're going to be sending this postcard to. Um, and I'm going to give you a writing prompt. We're going to write for three minutes. And I'm going to give you the first words of the prompt. Really, really simple. You're going to write the words, I remember. And then you're just going to go for it. Just finish the sentence. What do you remember about this person that you miss? Um, you can stay in one memory. You might jump around. Anytime you run out of something to say, just repeat the words, I remember and see what else comes. And so we're gonna be generating a bunch of memories about this person, and we're gonna work with one of those for our postcard. So I am, does that sound good to people? Give me a thumbs up if you're on board. Cool, so I'm gonna set the timer for three minutes and I'll let you know uh, when we're done. And begin. Hey, Amy, um, we have a question is in the chat. Someone's just saying, could you say that one more time that I remember this? Could you just run through that really quick? One yeah, more time? yeah, totally. Um, so you're going to write down the words I remember, and then you're just going to keep going. So whatever comes to mind, I remember, and you're thinking about this person that you miss. I remember when you finished the sentence. If you run out of that memory, then you just repeat, I remember again. 
I remember, and then there's another memory. So you're basically gonna be just generating a list of I remember statements, and then you're gonna work with one of those for your postcard. We've got about two minutes left. It is like the Joe Brainerd poem, A plus, A plus. So take about another minute. All right, try to get one more I remember sentence down if you can with about 15 more seconds to go. Okay, awesome. So pencils down. Hopefully after that prompt, you have at least one memory in one of those sentences that you're gonna work with for your postcard comic. Um, so I'm gonna take you back to my drawing cam and show you the next step. All right, so this is my postcard. I'm gonna choose one of my memories. So I was thinking about my mom. The memory that I like the best of her that I wrote down is I remember when your first boyfriend, Leo Schlesberg, told me that you were funnier than Barbara Streisand. <laughs> Something my mother has told me many times. So I'm just gonna start by writing the words I remember in the corner. And I'm gonna box that sort of like it's a line of narrative. And then I'm gonna use the body of the comic to illustrate that one memory to the best of my ability. And I can use words and images for clarity. Basically, I'm thinking about this postcard as sort of like one panel in the comic of my life with my mother. And I'm gonna use words and images to evoke this memory. Um, so I'm gonna give us eight minutes to draw. Um, and that'll basically, basically be it. I'll let you guys watch me draw. And I'm gonna set the timer for eight minutes. and go ahead and draw. So basically this one postcard is one panel and our memory is gonna be one panel, if that clarifies the question I just saw.
So for anyone who jumped on late, the cheat quick version of this activity is you're just drawing a postcard of a memory and sending it to that pers the person who that memory is about. We've got about three and a half more minutes. So I'm gonna add a little decoration to mine. And if you guys don't finish these, obviously you can finish them later. So if you're still working, keep working. In the minute we have left, I'm just gonna show you how to turn it into a postcard, which is very simple. Basically turn it over. You draw a line down the middle, three lines on this side, stamp goes here, address, Write your message here. And that's it. So make your last marks.
You guys can finish those up later. Do it as often as you want. I'm excited about my final product. My mom often tells me that Leo Schlossberg told her that she's funnier than Barbara Streisand. But I have one particular memory of being in like a hotel room with her. So that's what I tried to draw. Um, I hope she likes it. So uh, thanks. And now I direct your attention to the wonderful GB Tran, who's going to be making more cards. Um, these ones a little more pop up. So take it away. <laughs> Yes, pop, 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 pop. <laughs> uh, thanks, Amy. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us this uh, this late afternoon, evening, early morning, depending on where you're, you're coming in from. Um, uh, yeah, so wonderful. Thank you, Believer, for creating this event. Uh, what a way to end the, your season off with a bang. Um, I will be working, walking us through making a pop-up card uh, because if you're like me, you're probably going to be mailing out some gifts over the next couple of weeks. And when the person actually gets the gift, they can't open it for a couple more weeks. But this is something I thought you could include in the gift so that um, they have something to, to enjoy while they're waiting until that Christmas morning. So what we're going to do is make a pop up card that's going to be a fireplace. All right. And you'll just need some paper. Uh, some scissors and then something to draw with because you'll want to decorate the, the, the pop-up once you're done with it. Okay, so there's a little bit of geometry involved, um, but I'll keep it pretty high level because um, yeah, usually I'd be using a cutting board and a ruler and all that stuff. But for now, I think this is, this is just gonna be a fun little exercise. Okay, so first thing, take your piece of paper holding it landscape, so wider than taller, right? Landscape, this is landscape and this is portrait. So holding it landscape, fold it in half, right? Corner to corner. So you're making a little booklet here, right? And I wish I had that awesome camera set up that Amy had, <laughs> but we'll just be doing it like this. Uh, okay, so now you have a folded piece of paper, right? So the first thing we're gonna make is the actual fireplace. So on the edge, that's actually the folded, the, the folded edge, right? So this is the folded edge. You're gonna wanna make two cuts into it. And these cuts basically are gonna be the fireplace. Now, the key thing is when you cut into it, uh, you don't want to make the cut taller or deeper than halfway up the page, right? Um, You'll, I'll illustrate that a little bit right now. So I'm going to cut one side of the fireplace where it can be it can be anywhere on the paper. So this is going to be one side. And right here, I've only cut it up to here, right? So just almost to the halfway point of the height of that, right? So that's one side of the fireplace. And now for the other side, I'm just going to kind of guesstimate around here. I will cut up the same height, right? So you should have this little thing right here. Right, so let's approximately at the same height. Cool. Okay. The key thing is that you cut it on the folded edge, right? Not the on the folded spine, not the open edge. Okay. So once you do that, you'll open it up. Right. You've got this little weird dangly thing in here. So opening it up on the inside, you'll take what you just cut out and pull it out. And conveniently enough, there's already a crease here, right? That crease was from the initial fold. What you'll want to do is use that crease and actually fold it the opposite direction, right? So that, okay? And then after you do that, you'll close it back up. And then, whoops, sorry, my crease popped out. You'll close it back up, but once, make sure that this part stays forward and then push it all down like this. All right, cool, 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 looking good. Um, and now you'll notice when you open it back up, you'll have this shape right here, right? Cool, awesome. So closed, open. So this is gonna be your fireplace. Now, let's, let's, let's add some more parts to it. So let's add a ledge to the fireplace, a ledge where you can, you know, where people like to sit down with the backs of the fire and get cozy at night. So what you'll do is along this part of it right here, right? Okay. 
you're going to actually do the exact same thing. You're going to cut, fold it down and then you're going to cut two slits into it. The slits are going to be much shorter because it's a ledge. So it doesn't have to be as deep as the first plate one for the fireplace. And maybe if you want, you can just watch me while I do it really fast before you, you do it to yours. So this is a little part, right? And then I'm going to same deal. I'm just going to do like a little, little cut here and then a little cut on this side. So now I have this little flap here, right? Once again, along the bent part. And I'm going to open it up, right? And then you'll see the same, do whoops, same deal. You'll pull it through and along the crease that was naturally there already from the previous fold, you'll fold it the other way, right? So you got this little thing here now. Right? And then you'll squish it down just like you did the, the bigger part. And now when you open it up, you'll see that you have a little ledge there. Right? Does everybody see that? Right? Okay. So you got a little ledge. Awesome. Ta-da! Yeah, there you go. And then when you, if you do this again, you, you can see you can experiment with the size of the ledge. You can make it more narrow. You can make it wider. All that fun stuff. So this is just the general structure of what you're building right. So the last thing we need for the, our fireplace is a little chimney or is it a flute? I don't know, it's, it's where the heat goes so your, your house doesn't burn down. Um, so we're gonna make that next. So you'll go to the top part here, right? This is where it's gonna be created from. And for the same thing, you'll fold it back down, or fold it back down, and you'll make two slits in here. Now, don't do it yet, because this is gonna be a little bit different from the, the two previous cuts that you did. So the first thing is you'll make them very short because what this is going to be, it's, it's the depth of the, the chimney. So you don't want it to be sticking out too long because when you fold it, you'll see it on the folded card and all this stuff. But so you'll just make really, really short cuts here, right? So I'm going to just do one here and one here for the approximate width of it, right? So super, super short, not deep at all, okay? Now, to make the height of the chimney, you're actually going to unfold this, right? And then you're going to take the two cuts that you made here and along this part, you're going to extend them even further because that is going to be the height of the chimney. So once again, if you just want to watch me do this before you try it on your own, I'm going to stick my scissors in there, right? And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to just say that's, that'll be the height for that side. And then on this side, I will want it to do at the same height as well. So then you've got this thing. I mean, obviously that's a little jagged there. And if you, you could probably, I could have taken a little bit more care uh, cutting that, but uh, ah. <laughs> okay. So then you've got this odd, strange shape, right? So now you're going to push it through just like you did the last two times, but this time ignore this crease right here. Right. You don't want to don't don't bend that crease like you've done the, for this part and this part. You actually want to bend it where it connects to the the base, the top of your fireplace here. So you actually want to bend that, which hopefully would be fairly easy because the, the, the paper will naturally want to do that because there are these two slits in it. And then when the top, you'll just basically bend it a little bit on the top. Right here. All right, right there. And a little bit again on the counter so that basically you've got this shape. All right, sorry, let me go. All right, so you've got this tall thing here. So it's a, it's a piece of beautiful, it's a masterful piece of artwork. Okay, so now you notice when you close it, right? When it, all, everything closes down and folds, it'll, it'll lay flat. Oh, sure. Let me bend this a little bit more, but it'll lay flat. So when you open it, it pops up like this. So this is your three-dimensional fireplace. This is your ledge. I'm sorry. This is this is your ledge. This is the front of your fireplace. This is the top of it, and this is the chimney thing. So this is this is where I wish I really had Amy's camera set up. So I'm going to take a couple minutes to deck, like one minute to quickly doodle into mine so that we can illustrate the fact. So when you're when you're drawing the details, I recommend flatting it as a, just a natural piece of paper, like a flat surface, so it's easier to draw and doodle on. 
So for me, I'll just doodle on this for one minute, less than a minute probably. And then I'll show you what, what you can do with it. And then, you know, in your own time, if you decide to do this again, you can add some glitter or some glue, some special stuff on it, rhinestones if you want. Okay, so I'm gonna show you my first phase of drawing here. If you can see, I've basically done this, right? So we've got the little, my fancy faux brick texture, because, uh, you know, it's a brick fireplace. Got a little raging fire in the, the alcove with the log on there, and then you got the, the brick texture from the chimney. So that's one step. And now you can even add more artwork to the top, right? Like if you want to leave something out for Santa Claus, then you could draw a little plate of cookies, right? So on top of the ledge, I've drawn, I've left, well, really close up, a little plate of cookies and maybe a cup of milk for Santa Claus, right? If you uh, doing it for family and friends and maybe, I don't know, like maybe at the top of your fireplace, They've got actually like pictures, right? Uh, uh, I, I don't have erasable ink, but you could have actually drawn some stockings maybe along the front of the fire. Well, not the fireplace, cause that'd be a fire hazard, but maybe along the front of the chimney there, you could have drawn some stockings with the, the recipient's names on them. Or like my favorite, you know, as you kind of spend a little bit more time on it, you can then actually Use all the surface area, right? You can draw some characters. Yeah, the fireplace. I guess I, I guess I should be the, in this one, considering I will be sending it to someone. I decided to put myself into this on the other side of the fireplace, or at least the way my kids see me. Um, and then, of course, you still have all this open air right here and when you can personalize it with the message to the recipient and all that good stuff, right? But there you go. That's your, your 3D pop-up fireplace, right? It folds down like this. And then when they open it up, whoop, ta-da! Okay, there you go. <laughs> and the fireplace can be wider, it can be smaller, the ledge, all that stuff, you can mess around with it, play with different iterations. So the last thing I will uh, show you though, before we hand it off, or actually should we give, Kristen, should we give them some a little bit of time to decorate their fireplace for sharing later? Yeah. Okay, Go all right. It. So, all right, well, why don't we, why don't we take um, like three or four minutes to do that? And then I'll show you the very last step of this because there's, you don't probably want to just send this. <laughs> but everybody take uh, like three minutes to, to fill in their, their fireplace scene with content. And I'm sorry I don't have a camera on what I'm doing, but trust me, I am also drawing at the same time. <laughs> Not pretending to draw.
So a couple of minutes. Just one more minute and I'll show you the last step. And of course you can finish this a little bit later if you're in the middle of you know, writing a really sweet heartwarming message. Don't feel pressed for time. Fifteen more seconds. Okay, cool. So I just spent a little bit more time decorating mine with some smoke from the chimney, some festive messaging, some gifts on the ground, little carpet around the fireplace, possibly a fire hazard, um, <laughs> all those things, right? So filled out the scene a little bit. So the very last step is if you've got some construction paper, much as Amy did with her, her gift, uh, it's something a little bit thicker than the paper would be nice. I've got the, actually, I'm gonna grab this. I just pulled, I raided my kid's craft corner and just found this. Uh, so this one, holding landscape, you'll wanna fold it in half. Right. Uh, and then this will actually be the, the casing for the card. So you can just take this, right? You'll put it in here. You can glue down all the points of contact or tape down all the points of contact so that when the recipient opens it, so it'll be, it'll look nice like this on the outside and you can address it and do all your doodles and snap snazzy stuff like that. And when they open it, then it'll actually be the card itself. And it's uh, a, a lot uh, cleaner, prettier, more supported than if you had just sent this, which obviously isn't supported at all because it just flopped over in my hand. So yeah, whatever you want to use as the casing to give it a little bit of support. And then, you know, as they wait for the next several weeks to open whatever gift you gave them, they can just stare at this on their, their mantle or their fireplace and be your, get, get excited about it. So, um, and that's it. That's your, your pop-up fireplace holiday card for friends, families, and loved ones. And now, um, finally, we are gonna move on to uh, Malaka. Uh, and she is going to walk us through another wonderful craft project that's pretty unique. And I guess that's all. Hello. <laughs> Thank you, GB. I um, love my craft. This is so cute. Oh, I'm so wow. excited. <laughs> And Amy, I loved my, I actually cheated and did three panels instead because I like couldn't tell my story, but I'm very happy with this postcard. Um, yes, a parole, shout out for the parole. So um, today we're gonna make badges of honor um, for the special people in your life. It can be even for yourself. It can be for a family member who's really gone above and beyond. It can be, this one says, um, I survived 2020. I am so glad this year is over. And we're gonna make these things together. I use a safety pin and I can pin it to myself and I'll have my own badge or you can give this as a gift to someone. Um, tonight, I'm gonna make my badge for my mom who has been dutifully following the pandemic rules. Um, she's been like a, like most, I know a lot of parents have been like not great with like following the COVID guidelines, but my mom has been like super cautious. So I want to give her an award for giving me one less thing to think about in this pandemic. So we're going to make this tonight. 
So the first thing that you're gonna, um, I just wanna talk about materials really quickly. I personally like using trash and found materials around the home to make projects. And as you can see, I use a plastic bag for this to make this ribbon. Um, it's just sort of like a fancy plastic bag bag that I had around the house, but I want to go through some materials to, to jog your inspiration in case you you feel like not what you, you maybe want to grab something else to use for this project. Okay, so um, here's some Christmas paper that seems like soft and pliable and cuttable. This is nice. Um, you will need cardstock. Um, this is some orange paper I just randomly had. Um, here is a plastic Hello Kitty bag that I think could be really cool. You could feel free to mix and match materials. Like this is, this is two plastic bags. You can just layer. This is a Harry and David uh, tissue paper wrap from somebody's gift basket to me. I also like the paper of this. And this is also some styrofoam paper that I just think is really groovy and soft and cuttable. Oh, and here's some anthropology gift wrap that has like hair in it. So I think it looks kind of kind of neat when you cut it up. So anyways, if you want to take a bop, look around your house to see whether there's any inspiring pieces of trash that you might want to use for your, your award winning award, then please take a moment and grab that trash because I think it just makes really fun, um, just fun textures. I think it's great. I might myself use the cellophane, this, this, um, trash yeah okay the first thing you need to do is you need to obviously have the person that you want to honor in your mind as i said and i'm going to give this to my mom for following the pandemic rules and giving me one last thing to think about you're going to basically cut two circles i've just taken my cardstock um and fold it in half and you basically want to make a circle the size of like the opening of a mug or a cup and just freehand it, you know, it's like, just, there, you don't have to be perfect, but if you wanna be perfect, go ahead and trace a cup or something. But I'm gonna go ahead and freehand these circles. Oh, and you don't have to make them badges. You can actually hole punch the top and turn them into an ornament. Um, they make great ornaments too. Um, if you feel like the person who you're gonna give this to won't wear their badge, which is a real shame, um, then you can make it into an ornament. So here I have my circle. Um, yep, it's good. I've got two circles. And once you've got that, I want you to go ahead and take your bits of trash um, and just think about, you don't have to, I, I want you to choose two textures of your trash. So um, I'm gonna choose this and maybe I'm gonna choose this, um, this paper. And basically you're gonna cut See, see the circle here? You're gonna cut like maybe one inch out around that circle, okay? So you need two pieces of large circles using the two materials that you have. So I'm gonna just do it quickly so you can see what I'm going for. And then, yeah, about maybe an inch and a half too, to be generous. Because the more, um, the more you have around the, the small cardstock circle, the more fun we can have with making it look really crazy. Okay, so you can see here that I did. Okay, okay so see what just like about an inch and a half around. Um, or an inch. So once you have this, um, what you're going to do is you're just going to make cut cut around like that just around hold it all together so that you can make sure that you're um, cutting it to the cardstock circle not through cutting around it because we're gonna this is basically gonna be like the the fun frilly part of the ribbon prize ribbon. So just gonna go all the way around using your two materials, your plastic bag, your tissue paper, regular paper. Um, and we're gonna decorate this later too. So if you just use plain white paper, that's totally fine. I kinda wanna see what other people are doing. Are you guys, you guys doing this? I'd love, okay, great. Okay, so keep going around. And I'd love to know what are you gonna devote your award to? Please tell me in the chat. 
So here you have circles. And as you can see, I made two circles. So what I'm gonna do is kind of stagger them a little bit. You don't want it to be, a, take the circles and kind of like stagger them because you want the ruffles to be undulating underneath. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna sandwich your two cardstock pieces in between. So you see what I did here? Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and um, put this down because we're gonna do one more thing. You can even use a different material too if you want to go ahead and I'm gonna use this pink paper. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the ribbon part of this here, this ribbon. So you're gonna cut about a one inch strip um, of paper or whatever material that you have. So let's see, I'm gonna, yeah, about a one inch strip of this hair fabric, hair paper. So I've got this, and then you're going to fold that in half, your hair paper or whatever material you have, and then cut a V like a ribbon. So like, see this where it has a V here? You're gonna cut kind of like a in it. I'm just dumping this on the floor. I'll clean that later. So you see that I've made like a little V and then open it a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to, before you glue everything together, you're going to um, put that kind of like that. And we're gonna make this, we're gonna ruffle this up. So don't worry about that. Okay, so here's the construction. I first want to take you, you to take your first piece of cardstock and then take a glue stick or tape, tape is fine. I'm gonna use a glue stick, anything that you can have and you're gonna take your first piece of like fluffy material. I don't know what to call it. I'm just gonna call it fluffy material. And you're going to affix it to the center of the circle like that, okay? So take a moment to glue this together like that. I will take the moment now. I have more of a glue stick one. I have so much stuff on my glue stick. Here's my glue stick. Here's my glue stick. Some gluey. I wish I had that thing that Amy had as well. Um, so you can see what I'm working on. Um, and I'm gonna tell my mom that she doesn't wear this badge, I'm gonna be really offended. <laughs> okay, so you can see that this is the first thing, like that. Then you're gonna take your ribbon thing. I actually don't really like this that I made, it looks trashy. I know it's trash, but it looks bad. So I'm gonna redo mine. <laughs> there, I have standards, okay? It's not just like, it's not just like I make stuff out of trash, you know, like I have standards. So I'm gonna redo that. <laughs> and it's okay if you want your thing too. It's like, I, um, obviously I'm doing it, so. Jeez, okay. Um, I'm gonna do it with this like Christmas. Oh no. I'm gonna do it with this Christmas paper. Okay. So then you're gonna take your V thing, okay? This thing. And then you're gonna put it here. Like I'm turning this, this project over and you're gonna put it about, you're gonna tape it about midway like that, this is what it looks like on the back, so that what it looks like is this in the front. Do you see what I mean? Oh, Amy, if you want my trash, I have a plastic bag collection. So, I mean, this bag, I've been holding on to it for years, honey. Okay, so I, I don't know if I can actually share it with you now that, I, now that I'm saying this out loud. Um, all right, so I'm gonna um, put this, I'm taping the little thingies so that you have this. This is what it's supposed to look like, like a prize, like a prize at a fair, except the fair is the pandemic and the prize is something that you just made up. Okay, now you're gonna take your second piece of trash. I have my Harry and David paper that I've been saving for years for this moment. And I'm gonna just kind of put it behind, behind that, behind that ribbon, see that? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and tape and glue this like that over it. 
So let's, let's do that quickly. And is last, which is when you're dedicating your award to someone very special in your life. And encourage them to proud, <laughs> proudly. <laughs> All right, so I've done that. Okay, on the back. And then finally, I'm putting my, my last piece of cardstock on the back like that, um, just to give it some heft. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quick. And okay, this paper. All right, so yeah, this is what you should have. Okay, now is the fun part. Um, you're gonna just kind of like ruffle this and mess it up a little bit because like it's supposed to look like kind of you know like a celebration so you kind of want to just don't tear it though just kind of gently just to give it some 3d dimension you know like it's popping you know pop that's what you want it to do so so here's your award and I'm going to take my safety pin um, and just like, you can also use a hole punch if you happen to have one. You can put a string, um, you can put a state like, like just like put a sit clothes line or something, clothes pin or, and just hang it on a tree. You'll find a way to do it. But I'm going to use a pin and the way that I'll do that is just I'll tape the pin on. Okay, now it's your decoration time. Um, I uh, feel free to use a marker to put your award on it. As I said, I'm going to give this to my mom. Um, congratulations for being a COVID conscious mom. Number one COVID conscious mom. This doesn't really ring off the tongue, but you know what I mean. What I, I also just put some, I'm going to put some frilly lines around my award like that so that it looks celebratory and um, put number one covid rule following mom okay there's my award that's what it says and um, if you have, I'd love to see, uh, oh, I can't wait for the share portion, but I'm gonna use stickers in the next minute, just one more minute to like decorate around it. You probably have stickers at home. Go get, go get your stickers. This is the moment. You're saving your stickers. I know you've been saving your stickers not to use them because you wanna use it for a special moment. This is a special moment to use your stickers because you're giving an award to someone. So if you don't use your stickers now, I don't know when you will. All right, so I don't know where my stickers went. God. Oh, here they are. So um, these are happy face stickers. It's like a cloud with a smiley face and a heart with a smiley face, star. Um, God, I would be so excited to get this award. Like if someone gave this to me, oh my God. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah, here we go. I decorated it. You can see the two look very exciting. And I hope that you enjoyed making this craft and make sure that you keep your trash and you can make lots of, you can decorate a whole tree with these. Thank you. Back to, um, back to Kristen. Hey everybody, that, uh, that was so amazing. I wish we could do this just like every night until the rest of the pandemic is over because I just feel so much better and more connected to everyone and just like filled with joy. So this is my favorite night or the favorite part of Friday Night Comics, which is the share portion. So we'd love to see what you made tonight if you feel comfortable uh, and hear about who you made it for and why they're special to you. So if you'd like to share, um, please just make first, make sure your camera is on and then go ahead and just raise your hand. You can either do this just like I'm doing now, or you can use the zoom, like the zoom function, the blue zoom hand, uh, by going under the participants tab and then, um, we'll select you. And when, uh, when you get selected, please tell us your name and where you're joining from.
Am I on mute? Oh, no. Hi, I'm Megan. I'm joining from Brooklyn. Um, and I would like to share my award. I want to give first prize to Kristen Radke in the category of bringing us joy through Friday night comics. Oh, it's already falling apart. So I'll, I'll glue it back together, Kristen. Thank you. <laughs> It's um, a, a post, a Christmas, a card for my friend who taught me to play the accordion. Um, and it's the, the, when it started, it said, I asked you if you knew anyone who played the accordion, and you told me you had six in your living room. I love that. I want to see a, a comic about all six of her accordions now. <laughs> no accordion player has just one. <laughs> Uh, hello, my name is Avery and I'm joining from St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, I made this because I don't like 2020. <laughs> <laughs> that looks so good. That's great. Are you going to wear it as a pin or is it, are you going to hang it on your tree? Um, probably I'm going to hang it on the tree if my cat doesn't eat it first. <laughs> Hi, I'm Natalie and I'm calling from Portland, Oregon. And I made this, I don't know if you can see it, for my friend who lives in Davis, who is my virtual walking pal almost every single day of the pandemic. We get on the phone and take a long walk together in our separate parts of the world. Hi, Natalie. Nice to see you. I'm Susanna, I'm in Denver, and I made um, an award. I, I put it in my book because I'm going to try and redo it later, maybe with, with ribbons and um, images. And it's for um, a woman named Kirsten Deaver. And she, um, I don't know her very well, but she rescued um, a, a cat and all of her kittens from, um, pretty much an inevitable doom. They were living in a shrub and I have two of the kittens now and they're so fun and they bring me so much joy. So I'm sending her an award for that. Hi, this is me, Amalia. I'm from Portland, Oregon. This is my award. I love that blue paper. Cool. I made an award. Sophia, I made an award for my friend who I haven't, who I haven't seen since the pandemic for being my friend. Hello. I'm Franny, I live in Klamath Falls, Oregon, and I recycled an American Girl catalog to make an award for my spouse. It says Klamath County's most patient library staffer. My spouse staffs the reference desk and has to deal with all my, like, the good and the bad of the whole public. And they should be home from work any minute now and I'm gonna give it to them. Thanks. Yay! Hi guys, um, thank you for this fantastic workshop. I made a postcard for my beloved friend Megan who came and surprised me on my birthday um, in Belgium. She flew all the way there and um, that's her showing up and yes. Her that is incredibly, beautiful. incredibly beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Um, so this, my name is Sasha and uh, I did my pop-up and I have stained glass chairs and then I have the Christmas tree going in and then I have the fireplace and kind of the presents and. And I'm Karen and I made a, a badge for Sasha for her enthusiasm, spark and shine. She didn't know, but here it is for her. <laughs> I love the additional colored paper you added to that fireplace scene. That's awesome. Hi, 
Hi. So I made a postcard for my friend who lives 3,000 miles away. We used to be roommates about the time he cleaned my room for me. And it was a horrible mess. And he came, I came home one night from work and he had cleaned everything it was so tidy. Um, oh my gosh. What a good <laughs> friend. <laughs> Are you going to return the favor one day? Well, I, I next time I fly to California from Brooklyn, I'll try to, but he's always very neat. So I don't think I, you yeah, have to find a different way to return the favor, which is the postcard. <laughs> That's what the postcard is. You did it. Thank you. Awesome. Hi, I'm Chris, and I'm in uh, Minneapolis, and I made uh, a badge for me with my with a uh, Halloween Halloween envelope. So I love that. That looks so awesome. You have to wear that. Lisa? My name is Cole and uh, I'm from San Diego. Uh, I made a badge for my dad. Is that him? Is that his face? <laughs> Is that his happy face? Oh, that's you. Got it. I love it. That's great. It looks just like you. I know that is going to be a tough act to follow, but if anyone would like uh, to share, we can take one or two more before we break for the evening. How do you share? Hi, I'm Dylan. I'm in Iowa City. Um, and I made a badge from my girlfriend, Natalie, and it says world's greatest Natalie. And I know someone else presented by the name of Natalie. And I don't, I don't know this for a fact. It's just my opinion. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. <laughs> Thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Um, this was this was a total delight and it's a, it's, it's an amazing end to a uh, difficult week, difficult month, difficult year. Um, we, if uh, you wanna share what you made tonight uh, further, um, we'd love to see, we'd love to see it. We'd love to see if you shared it with people online. You can tag us at Believer Mag on Instagram and please take the artists that you learned from tonight as well. Um, we will be, we are taking a brief break, uh, until January 8th. We'll be back in the new year with Alexander Beguez, who will be, uh, teaching us how to draw a dream log. So I want to thank you all again. Uh, I don't want to get too sentimental, but seeing you all every week has filled us with so much joy at the Believer and the Black Mountain Institute in Las Vegas. So, um, I'd love to hear a final send off. I've, un I've allowed y'all to unmute yourself. Uh, if you want to say thanks to the artists for tonight uh, before we uh, head out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Believer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.